1993 saw the universally loved director of Steven Spielberg bring us Jurassic Park to the big screen. Not for me though, because it came out before I was born. So we're kicking off a Jurassic marathon, guys. Here on the channel, I'm gonna be reviewing the Jurassic Park films as well as the Jurassic World films, all in the lead up to Jurassic World Dominion that drops in June or July. It's right around the corner, and if you guys haven't checked out my trailer reaction, you should go do that. Then come back here so we can kick off this marathon with the 1993 classic that is Jurassic World. Stay tuned. What's up everybody, welcome back to The Hess Project. I'm John Orlaza and today, like I said, it's a Jurassic Marathon that's starting today with 1993's Jurassic Park. This is one of the films where I heard a lot of people say great things about it and it's an all-time classic. It's a really great experience and it actually lived up to the hype and what people were saying for me. I can't exactly remember when I first saw this film. I definitely saw it before Jurassic World came out, but I remember really liking it when I was young and re-watching it now in my 20s. I love this film. There's so much richness to its directing, its writing, and even the performances, dude. I get so much out of everybody's performances now as an adult. Let's start it off with the performances. Sam Neill, Laura Dirt, and Jeff Goldblum. So much chemistry between the three. Like, when you see them on screen going back and forth, and just that suave personality that Jeff Goldblum kind of has in this film, it, it works for him dude and the whole time he's trying to kind of have a little flirtatious thing with Laura Dern it's not like in your face but it's subtle you know and it works and I love Laura Dern's character in here man she's so involved with her work and just a great actress overall I, I really enjoyed her I think this is the first time I ever seen Laura Dern and the first time I've seen Sam Neill I think it's the only time I've seen Sam Neill and he's also fantastic in the movie dude they're on point every second of this movie and you buy into these people being the scientists of the are the paleontologists whatever they are and when they interact with John Hammond who's played by Richard Attenborough this is also the first time and only time I've ever seen him and he's a great actor too he's so good in the role as John Hammond he's so excited and energetic when he's on screen he's so excited about this park and getting it to open and getting these people who are so involved with like the world and history of dinosaurs bringing them to the park so that he could blow their minds like I, I loved that whole aspect of the film, man, and he's really the lifeblood of this first Jurassic Park film. You don't get this much excitement out of this film without Richard Attenborough's performance, dude. He's electric on screen, honestly. My favorite scene in the film, and I'm pretty sure it's everybody's favorite scene, it's when Alan, Ellie, and Ian, that sounds funny, <laughs> when Alan, Ellie, and Ian are first seeing the dinosaurs for the very first time, and you get the amazing John Williams score creeping in, and John Hammond is introducing them to the long necked herbivores that are just roaming and making the loud thumping noises dude it's such a magical scene and this movie is absolutely nothing like i said it's absolutely nothing without richard Attenborough's performance but it's also absolutely nothing without the score of john williams this is one of the most legendary scores of all time dude it's so catchy it's so well written man and it just gets it going it sends goosebumps all over my arms <laughs> I love this score, man, and the theme is just beautiful. Of course, Sam Neill has, like, that iconic scene where he, like, scrambles to get his sunglasses off and look at the herbivore. Like, it's so good, dude. It's really good. And then Richard Attenborough over there, like, we have a T-Rex. I love it, dude. This movie opens up and it awes you immediately with the dinosaurs. And, again, this is 1993, and these dinosaurs are not that terrible looking. This CGI, whatever they used, man, I know there's some animatronics with the smaller dinosaurs, like the, um, the Velociraptors and other ones I can't remember but there's a lot more animatronics I believe with the smaller ones the bigger ones of course are they have to be a little bit more um, CGI I guess I have to look into it dude I haven't seen any special features for this so if this is all real and this is all animatronics then I'm I don't know about that but it looks impressive for something that is damn near 30 years old it's impressive after the audience and the characters get introduced to the dinosaurs and what this park is really trying to achieve then we start to get into more of the discussion side of things about is this the moral thing to do is this something that we really should have done because the dinosaurs have never existed in any time in history with man 
And once they got wiped out, that's when man came into an existence. So it creates an issue. So I, I really liked that aspect of Jeff Goldblum's character of Ian Malcolm. Dude, like he presents a lot of great questions and he's not like this oddball um, you know, comedic character. He's not there just to be the comedic relief. He's there to pose great questions. Some questions that audience members might have when they're watching this film for the first time. Like, I really like that, dude. You have intelligence within your characters. They all have a little bit of a comedic aspect to them. You know, when Alan is stuck with the kids, he you know, fakes getting shocked by the electric fence to kind of scare them a little bit. Like, it's just little things like that that gives each character a lot of fun and depth. I prefer more realistic characters who could tell, like, like a joke or two during a runtime of a film, not necessarily characters who just solely exist to tell jokes every time they're on screen. Like a whole character that exists to be the comedic relief is very hit or miss and it's bound to fail sometimes. The only times that kind of a thing would work is if it's a great writer and it's a great actor who's delivering these lines. And dude, I can go on for a while talking about this movie. It's so good, man. The tension building scenes with the velociraptors in the kitchen hunting down the kids. It's so horror filled and like every time I see it dude I'm, I'm, I'm enthralled with it I want to see what happens I want to see these kids and these characters get away scot-free I want them to survive and it's just a testament to how great of a director Steven Spielberg is directing these actors with the material that they're given and bringing them to the promised land bringing them and elevating these characters to make you care about them so guys in the end Jurassic Park is a really special film it's one of those films that yes it's a little older but I I think it stands the test of time dude like that blend of action it's got a little bit of action mixed with a horror thriller element to it with dinosaurs dude like it's a monster flick to an extent and it's just amazing how they're able to pull off so many tones and blend them together and not make it seem messy and you know trying to find its tone like no it, this is a clear vision and it's beautiful dude I love this film and you guys should check it out if you have never seen the original 1993 Jurassic Park what are you doing it's a great movie you will have a fun time regardless go watch it so guys that's my review and thoughts on the 1993 Jurassic Park film let me know down below have you ever seen it please go watch it leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new be sure to stick around because like I said this is the start of the Jurassic Marathon I'm gonna be reviewing the Lost World Jurassic Park next yeah that's the name of it it's titled like that also be sure to stick around later in the week because I will be reviewing the Batman Matt Reeves directed film starring Robert Pattinson is finally here I know Fans are getting to watch it tonight. I was not aware of the fan screening that was happening tonight until it was too late. Like 40 minutes in and they were all sold out. The only thing that was left was the front row. And I'm not about to break my neck to watch this movie for you guys. I'm sorry. It's three hours long and I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to watch it on Thursday like everybody else. And be sure to look out for that review. It's going to drop on Friday as well as the other Jurassic Park and Jurassic World reviews. You might want to stick around to the channel guys because there is more to come.